to hear about this. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, right. So. Um, oh, I had a game related question. Oh, yes, yes. Go for it. Go for it. In the world generation bit. Mm. Um, at what stage do we determine the, the game's tech level? Um, we can sort of just go like now. So that would sort of be in sort of random finishing touches after you've created your families. Mm. But um, what are we thinking then? Um, Are there cell phones? Are there guns? Are there I think there are things like Sorry. Yeah, I, I think there are things like that from the past, like relics of the past, mm. but we don't know how to do them Mine... properly now. Maybe. Mm-hmm. So I might suggest that they have, uh, like anything that would have previously picked up Wi-Fi signals are probably a no-no. So okay. yeah, yeah, like so not everything, cell phones. Like everything. No. No, there are machines, believe it or not, uh, that that don't. Um, but so, like, I guess I was thinking like guns and like industrial machinery, yes. But like computers, well, computers, I guess, would well, be there. Just, but simple computers. I would have thought computers would be any tech from the world before would be very specialist and not would be an unusual thing to encounter and yeah, you may yeah. not understand how okay. it works. Yeah. But maybe you can the question is, already there, do we know how to make that things anymore? Or is hmm. that something we have but it's just from the past? Hmm. Like maybe the more sort of like like Lawrence said, like the more mechanical so sort of like pre electronic hmm. stuff can be maintained and to a certain extent manufactured. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything electronic tries to eat your brain so. <laughs> so it's sort of maybe like a sort of Bazaar Galactica situation where yeah, computers yeah. that weren't yeah. networked or whatever are okay yeah. and that but anything mm. more complex than that so basically anything sort of more advanced than the 80s or so is a danger <laughs> yeah which is a great aesthetic as well <laughs> and like simple enormous shoulder and simple entropy is... no sorry Ellie I keep talking over you they really need enormous shoulder pads. This is from the 80s. Go for it. Don't see why not. Makes sense. And maybe like simple entropy <laughs> meant that um, like even the more advanced of that technology is failing. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And I would imagine that the lower tech you've got, the easier it is to fix it, and yeah. the harder it is. So. Yeah, computers, there might be one or two that haven't broken yet, but if they break, that's it, we're screwed. Mm. Mm. Uh, you can't fix them, or at least not without... Doing a quest. Yeah, exactly. That makes and sense. Making a gun, or... I reckon should be doable, mm. because that is very mechanical, it's very hands-on. You know, if we're talking 80s, then you could totally do that kind of thing. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe, um... With regards to the electronics eat your brain thing, yeah. maybe the more network focused factions like the cult, the cultists, mm. or the we, we are a religion. I couldn't remember the proper name of the faction. But the singulars, the yeah, singulars, yeah. or the um, we don't just, like that kind of war. Yeah, they they work out, um, like given enough time and effort, they can like exercise. A given piece of technology and like ward it against the malicious mm-hmm. influences. So like there are a select few pieces of like sanctified network tech. Mm. Nice, yeah. That's cool. With holy firewalls keeping them safe. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So oh, what about communications? Hmm. Because that, that matters to me because I need because I can like put the word out and blacklist people, so I'd say radios, it's all right. Yeah, radios. No, I agree. Radio is something that has been around for like centuries, well, centuries. So that sounds like something that you should be able to do. Hmm. Next to me is the art of miniaturization. So where you you have machines that make things for you, smaller than you can make by hand. It's kind of our limit. Hmm. Anything we make, 
has to be something we can make ourselves rather than have been miniaturized by people. Okay. So miniature computers, totally out. A, a Valve computer. That would probably work because it's all stuff that you could do with. What? Right, that's the 1950s. Hmm. Or a different. I mean, not that anyone. Gen. Yeah, I mean, not that anyone would necessarily want to do that, but in terms of the amount of <laughs> tech available to us, so radio should be doable. That means probably cassette tapes or something mm. like that, but not necessarily laser etching CDs. Okay. I was going to say, um, so, it'd be quite cool if radios were like, if you if you wanted a, they were like World War Two era, like man packed, like big mm. radios, hmm. yeah. big bulky things, yeah. Yeah, nice. Riding with you, you have to have like a radio man in your party, or, mm. if you're going, so. or lady. At that point, we could almost have very grainy TV as well. Hmm. Yeah. We should consider that you know that being a, a thing that's there. It's not going to be your digital LCDs, but you know your vacuum tubes. Again, that's that's 1950s. Mm. So if we if that kind of era we're thinking. Would you be able to make a synthesizer with that level of technology? I mean, they had them in what, the... Like I honestly a... don't know how they work. Mm. Are you thinking 80s Electropop? <laughs> yes. I, don't see what I think... Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain things that, due to there being a whole apocalypse thing, mm. people would probably not bother putting that <laughs> out, uh, putting hours into yeah. making. But, uh, so that's I the thing is, is that all these things be theoretically possible. All these things are adaptations to the new world that you live in, you know. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't be just sort of lying around there because there would be no need for them. But could totally be created by uh, new factions afterwards. I think that's quite a rich vein if you decided to explore it of cultural development. I mean, a lot of us have culture as a a lacking thing. Yeah. So somebody decides, right, I'm going to be a synthetic music performer <laughs> there's, there's a niche for that yeah it? i mean it makes sense because you know <laughs> all the oh, sorry i was gonna say it's not necessarily the game we want to start with or the game we want to play right now but <laughs> if someone goes yes that's for me then i think it has a place in our world yeah definitely yeah awesome uh so does anyone have any other questions about their family stuff or the world? Oh, one thing I just recalled. Um, we sort of glossed over um, uh, asset investment uh, at the first session. Um, so you'll remember mm -hmm. that it said, like, you know, add one to maybe armory or outfit, and then for each surplus, add one to X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, yeah. So essentially, the uh, surpluses that you have as a family uh, affect what gear your character can get. Um, so okay. your uh, family will affect some of that. So like um, an enclave is always going to be good at having good intelligence, no matter what uh, their surpluses are, that sort of thing. But um, so if you could go to your families and work out what your two investments are. Um, sorry. Yeah, so you should have two points of investment from your family playbook and two points from the surpluses you picked. And the two points from your no, surplus are basically sort of open to your interpretation. Um, oh, I'll, I'll talk through what the different categories are because I guess that might be helpful. Um, so sorry. What um, document should I be looking at for the for this? Um, where do you have your character sheet somewhere? Yes. Right. Um, and you have. Um, let me see. So if you look at the uh, what's it called? Resources section of that. Mm hmm. Yeah, the surpluses. What are the other two things? You said oh, right. um, you get two investment from surpluses. Yes, yes. And... So for the Gilded Company, uh, <laughs> you get uh, one in outfit and one in vehicle for free. Okay. So uh, the five categories then are 
armory, which is the sort of versatility of weapons you can draw on. You'll have a sort of pool of tags to customize the weapons you get from your family. And the more points you have in armory, the more that range of the bigger that range of tags is. Okay. Second. Sorry. Um, yep. Sorry, I have to. Uh, second, there's outfit, which is what sort of protective gear you can call on. Um, each point of outfit gets you a tag to put onto your gear to maybe make it more armoured or better in certain environments or that sort of thing. Um, there's companions, which is how many minions you can get with you and how good they are. Uh, there's intelligence, which is how much you can find out about the world and how much your character, how effectively your character can make use of that. And there's vehicles, which is how good the things that you drive around in are. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find where that is on my character sheet. Uh, well, not the character sheet, but the family sheet. Uh, so the is in the original Enclave bygone law. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at it now. Uh, so, oh, there we go. No, I've got it. It's the it's in like page two under resources, right? Yes. Could you relink me to an editable version of my family sheet, please? Can do. Because I was operating on my phone for most of this last session, so. No, definitely sure. Um, one with the link can edit, copy link, and do, do, do. right. It's in the chat. Thank you. Well, the nice thing about Hangouts is it automatically pack, pops out the document. That's neat. Okay, so our resources should give us basically. Our surpluses give us two boosts, so one for each of the surpluses. Mm. And then, okay, and then at the top of the resources thing, there's an add one investment to blah and blah. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Hello. And then presumably you get boosts if you manage to change the need into the surplus. Yeah, so for every surplus you pick up in the field, you'll add an extra point to your investments. Cool. Mm. Um, so right now do we have to make a choose anything? Um, um, so if you've the... chosen a point of armory, you need to add a tag to your list of um, options. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only once we've chosen a character type, right? Uh, no, it's so for armory, it's when you increase investment, it um, you add a thingamajig, a uh, tag to the list. Okay, now I'm lost. Okay. Um, okay. So I, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So on the peripheral character moves thing, so yes, tags. And I have one by default from being the Lawbringers of Armory, this is. Yeah, which is uh, non-lethal. Okay, and then I've got, because I picked Surplus of Weaponry, I get to pick the second one. Yes. Okay, yeah, I see how this works. And this is the Sorry, family book? So if you look at the um, move sheets that I linked in for the main event, actually I'll just relink them again. Mm-hmm. Okay, alright. Yeah, it's on page two. Yeah, yeah, it's under peripheral family moves. And um, so these won't necessarily go on the same weapon. No. They're just the pool I can pick from when I create my character. Mm. Right, I see. Yep. Oh. Mm. 
Mm. And if I don't have any arsenal, I just use whatever it's there. Yeah. You can have a uh, melee weapon and, or a ranged weapon, or and it can be unreliable if you want. Yeah, that's always good. <laughs> um, so I'm a bit behind. Nope, yeah. um, so uh, investments, you said. What does it? Do, what do I get? Free point in again? Um, sorry, I'm looking up. Uh, it is in outfit and vehicles. Right. And then do I have any other points other than that to distribute? Uh, well, what other than the, what surpluses, surpluses did you pick? It's just the surpluses. Uh, I've got choose any and Intel. Okay. Sorry, I think, uh, I think this is a bit more intuitive when they, they're on a character sheet in front of you, but uh, the Google Docs format is not so... <laughs> Yeah. As far as I can tell from my um, family book, yes, I've got one in either armory or outfit, and I'm going to choose armory. Okay. I've got two, one from Intel, from one of the mo movie services. Uh, I've got one in outfit, and then another one in Intel. So I've got armory, Intel times two, and outfit. All right, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. But do I need to do anything else with those yet? Uh, so you want to pick a tag for armory. So are Arsenal right, so and Armoury the same thing? Yeah, sorry. Uh, oh, whoops. Uh, and is there a list of tags somewhere? Yes, in that uh, PDF that I put in the chat recently. Oh, in the mm. Yep, okay, <clears throat> cool. Okay, so I, I have one... Uh, hmm. mm. okay. I have one okay. investment in Companions. Okay. So I think I have to get a follower. How do I do that? Oh, so that you pick when you get make a character. Oh. It's, it just means cool. that your followers will be pretty good. Nice. So could you um just explain the whole armory tag weapons thing? Okay. So each uh, point of Armoury gives you a tag that you can use to customise your weapons. Think of it as a sort of pool of, I don't know, weapon mods you can slap onto things. Um, so when you make a weapon, you will draw two or three tags from that list. Um, you start with melee, ranged, or and unreliable. Unreliable means that it's sometimes bad and sometimes great. And then for each extra point of Armoury, you pick a tag from the list and uh, add it to the available points. Okay. So I've got nothing in our armory. Right. So you can just have uh, melee or ranged weapons, and they can be unreliable if you wish. Okay. And mine currently reads, investment currently reads, armory zero, outfit two, companions... Zero, vehicle two, Intel one. Sounds good. So you've got you're good at you've got high survivability and good amount of ability to move around and some intelligence, mm -hmm. but you won't have much in the way of friends or weapons. Mm. Sounds about right. Good stuff. A oh, I was looking at the at, at the PDF of the at the PDF of the cutter sheet, mm. which only says that that I have one in companions and one in Intel, but. On Google, it says there is two of each. Uh, let me see. Um... <laughs> I haven't allocated one of mine. Um... So that's cool. I have extra components put... Intel. I'm going to put another point into Intel. So I have two Intel. Well. Yeah, so you should get two points from your playbook and two points from your surpluses. Does that make mm, sense? So... Yeah, so I can add two more points to whatever I have already. Okay. I got it. Uh... Hmm. I must admit, on the outfit tag list, I'm liking the idea of thermo. 
uh, which negates freezing and scorching temperatures. I mean, just like, I wish I had one right now. Yeah, it would be very nice. Um, <laughs> I think, actually, I'll go for hardened because it protects against hacking, which seems like a good thing. So those you don't need to pick at the moment, but they're sort of good things to have in mind for what sort of things you um, need. So oh, I, sorry, I thought we were meant, meant to pick those. Oh, no, it's just, it's just armoury. <laughs> hmm. Might need to oh, pick okay, one star fine. for both. I pick... Well, I've got ranged for armoury, so that's fine. Yeah. I mean, you start with ranged. You have ranged by default. Oh, right, so I get... Right, so... You have melee, ranged, and uh, unreliable by default. Okay. Maybe mark those on the um, on the move sheet somehow. Well, they are marked yeah, on the cool. p p PDFs of the playbooks. Sadly. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, fair enough. But yeah. Ugh. On, on okay. that move the sheet that you've given us. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yes. It's too it's hot for eating hot food. Star next to... It is. It is far too hot. <laughs> Okay. Why, don't it, why didn't I just eat these chips frozen? <laughs> so on the wet, the Because then you'd regret it in a few hours' time when your stomach was like, "Oh, I've eaten raw potatoes." It would be the worst day ever. So on the weapon type list, yes. Am I correct in saying that most of these don't do anything mechanically? They just dictate the kind of situations you can use them in and the in fiction effects. None of them have numbers attached. Exactly. So okay. the way that the sort of fighter person move works is you put yourself in a position where you're able to hurt them and then you roll it um so basically your weapon tags tell you sort of what when it'll take roll. to be in a position where you can hurt them actually i'll just be right back i can hear baby noises outside so i think i'll just see if this needs any sort of assistance Fair. Yeah, give it a couple of years and we'll get the baby involved. It's great. Uh, okay. Brutal. You've got to be careful with that, though. If you try try too hard to raise a geek, you'll get the opposite. Yeah, you say that's true. That's your father's try to raise your normal and you become a disappointment of a geek. You try to raise a geek and you become like, uh, and they become like a boring normal person. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Both my parents are incredible geeks. <laughs> it's not universal. It yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jasper is uh, teething at the moment and it's 30 degrees Aww. and so it's not, it's not a good time. Yeah. Everything is awful. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay, so... Mm -hmm. So we are we done with investment? Does everyone what, have four things yeah, invested? And what does elegant mean? Uh, basically, uh, when you use it, people will think, "Oh, they look cool." And also, if you're going up against something that's you know uh, pretty unsophisticated, maybe someone's got a, just a big old hubcap that they're trying to use as a shield or. Um, whatever, uh, okay. you can bypass it I like because you sort of dodge around that. it. Okay, and I've, I've so, got two in vehicle. Okay. Um, but I want my vehicles to be like genetically engineered riding lizards, as discussed last time. That's cool. Um, it says, living mounts normally don't provide environmental protection for actors' followers. They use chrome for quality and get specialties instead of weapon tags for might. Yes. They um, so followers um, are like helpers and assistants and etc. They're the, they're the people you get from companions. Um, right. uh, followers will have a quality score, which is both how good they are at doing their thing and their health, um, and uh, specialties, which are basically just the different things that they can you can send them off to do. So if you had um, say two points in might, that would give you two specialties, which you might want to have be I don't know, uh, clawing people and climbing walls or something. Right. And chrome is well, it becomes quality. Yes. Which is 
the number you'd add when you roll for that. Yes. So much, so the, the specialties, again, like decide what circumstances you can roll in. Yes. And then the quality gives you a bonus to that roll. So specialties okay. are basically things they can effectively do away from you or without your direct control. Without me? Yes. Okay. Right, I'll put one in each and then decide what they are later. Cool. So am I right in thinking that in that character move references PDF you linked us, there's no list for Intel mm. tags? Uh, Intel doesn't have tags. Okay. Um, cool. Where's the Intel rules? Oh, it's not Basically, it just allows you to ask questions to, to the GM. Yep. The uh, more Intel you have, okay, the more questions cool. you can ask. Basically, yeah. Yep. Awesome. So it, it, all my PDFs are loading incredibly slowly, so <laughs> like that's why I've no had worries, trouble no searching through the legacy. All right. Let me just check Intel. Yep. Uh, basically, um, you'll your character will have a number of points equal to your points in Intel. You spend a point to ask me a question. Cool. Okay. And that doesn't regenerate. No. Well, until you go back to your family's holdings and pick up more intelligence. Oh, right. Yeah. It honestly makes the most sense for me to just dump both my vehicle points into Chrome. <laughs> Have the swankiest thing. Yeah. <laughs> I and Chrome. Yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. All right. Okay. I wish someone comes on with mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally melting. I'm dying. Yeah. Why did I eat hot May food? I recommend a fan? Uh, you can recommend, recommend it. It's not gonna. It's not gonna bring one into existence, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Well, a folded piece of paper or an envelope might be the same thing. Right. Getting kind of overcast. Maybe a bit of rain here. Uh, uh, I'm going to oh! literally eat your intestines <laughs> after freezing them because it's too hot. <laughs> All right. So. Cool. So we've got that sorted out. Um, I think you can see why I sort of called it to an end before going over that last session. Because uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we've got bring myself back on here. Yes. Um, right. So might as well just have a quick sort of revision of the world that we made together. Um, so you've got your big stacks of um, server towers. You've got um, cannibals to the north. You've got a weird cache of doomsday weapons to the southwest past the uh, field of antennae that create ghosts. You've got this big salt flat to the south that's a warning of severe drought to come and a prophet of doom who has walked out of it preaching all sorts of terrible things, I'm sure. To the east, you've got a jail holding those prisoners who were uh, too terrible for the network to hold. And so, Not holding them anymore. Yes, they are now free, thanks to hold. a renegade from the transistors. And just past there, a research centre that first understood the fall's oh. root cause. So, um, a lot of terrible things going on, to be mm -hmm. sure. Um, so the question is, uh, what are you going to do about it? And... In particular, the question is, uh, what characters are you going to make? I I, I, I may have a cho chosen one already because I, I have an idea. Okay, cool. The Firebrand. Okay. I don't know if anyone else has looked into it. So the Firebrand's a sort of insurrectionist type. They're great at sort of blending in with another social group, uh, finding out their weaknesses and uh, tearing them down from within. Uh-huh, yeah. So if, um, if you want to play the firebrand, is that with relation to a particular issue that you want to pursue? Because if so, uh, we might want to pick our characters with dealing with that hmm. issue in mind. Uh, so that, it's cool, actually, if you just sort of pick a character, because part of character creation is working out why they were chosen. Hmm. There's, okay. actual, there's actual sort of things for that. Yeah, <laughs> I, may have, I may or may not have not chosen it because I wanted to blow up things for God. <laughs> but yeah, let's go. Let's let's find a reason for that. That is better. My internet went out there for a minute. 
Oh no. Um, I was I was just asking, are uh, our characters uh, explicitly the leaders of our organisation, or are they just significant Not at figures? All. So part of creating a character is working out what their mission is. And those missions mm -hmm. are broken down into uh, leader, agent, outsider, or rebel. So a leader is someone who's been put in a position of responsibility by the family. A agent is someone who's being sent out into the wasteland by the family to do something specific for them. A rebel is someone who objects to some part of the family's current uh, actions and is trying to change that. And an outsider is basically an outcast or someone who is completely working outside the family. Right, so we have a firebrand, a hunter, mm -hmm. an envoy, and a scavenger. Yes? Yep. Cool. Mm hmm I created a copy of the hunter. Nice. I figured out how to do it this time. Hooray! Hacker man. <laughs> so, uh, when you're making your character, I'm going to say that actually, sort of ignore the order that things are down there at the moment, and first go to character role, where you pick that sort of leader, agent, <clears throat> rebel, or outsider thing, because that's going to mm -hmm. guide a lot of sort of what the character is going to be doing. Is that at the bottom? Is it at the bottom? I was going to nip to the toilet for a minute. Okay, okay. Is that roll move? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, got that Okay. Got enough computers running on. So I'm thinking that for what I want out of the character. Hmm. So I guess when it says you're sent to bring peace between two groups, uh, can that be based in grudges that I already know exist? So for example, between the my own clan and say the uh, Ed's group, I thought the Law Keepers. Use the fact that it's my clan's fault that the prisoners got free. Yeah, yeah. Let me just have a look at the envoy. <clears throat> yeah. So, what is the grudge that's keeping them apart? Um, I would have thought that the, the, wouldn't the grudge be you set all these dangerous people loose? Seems legit. And now the world is worse for it. Yeah, I'd say that works. Bang. Cool. I'm just getting a glass of water. So Ed. Listening. Would you be okay with... So one of my role moves, I was thinking of taking agent, and it hmm. says... Uh, you're sent to bring peace between two groups. So I was thinking that your group having a grudge with my group because one of my group released the prisoners. Yeah, might be quite a good reason for them to send an envoy to go, hey, dude, please don't kill us. Yeah. <laughs> and if I pick... Um, if my agent move is um, like when you take on a hunt... Mm. Indeed. So are we all going for agents? Actually, I'm going for leader. Nice. Uh, because because uh, where is it? Firebrands. 
Uh, when your family rises up against an oppressor, Mark Leader. Mm. Obviously, the prophet, the prophet of doom. Okay. Threatening to be to oppress us all. <clears throat> so are they so actually I'm oppressing you? Well, they, they have to be, I guess, if you're picking that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, so are your yeah. people then sort of just a subgroup within the larger religious community? Um, we were like originally we were we were one uh, thing, we were just one group, but this cult has formed again uh, around the the prophet of doom. Okay, and it's start and it's starting to 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 erode, erode everything and 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 try, and stay, trying to take over. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> And that's not going to happen, which is okay. probably related to why I have chosen as as stacks for um, for Armory, brutal and aberrant. I'm going okay. to have something nice. <laughs> okay. Um, I Never. thought so. Refining my so, I was going to go for. Hang on. Yeah, I don't know whether it's um I don't know whether to go for agent which is when a group's relying on you to find a crucial component which the thought I had was that my mission that I present to everyone else is that I'm scouting the market which is part of my role yeah. but I have a another role which is to find uh some piece of technology that al allow my family to get to the um, camp past the uh, ghosts and stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're looking for something to or, help you get through the ghost field. Yeah. Right. Or um, the other thought I had was uh, a leader and that would just be a simpler like like quartermaster of the family seeking seeking you know new resources thing so it just wouldn't have that aspect to it the secondary aspect to it. i like but, the idea of know. trying to get through the ghost field that's quite cool yeah i quite i think that's a bit better all right so um so we have a hunter trying to capture that the criminal who's been busting out all these uh, yeah that makes sense yep yeah. Weren't they all? Didn't they also steal the um, map to the camp as well? Yeah, they did. Yeah, intriguing. Well, they stole some information about it. Yes. To Camp Turgidson. All right, so it's interesting. We have um, so we have the search for justice, the search for a way to get to the camp. Um, <laughs> A envoy trying to get peace and a firebrand trying to break free. Good stuff. So cool. now you've got your role. Um, do you want to have a look through your uh, stats and looks to have an idea of what sort, what your who your character actually is? Yeah, I read it. Okay, good. <laughs> You have a name and all. Yep. <laughs> so, I'm assuming the the stats basically boil down to if I was going to put them in in other RPG terms, they're kind of like strength, int, endurance, charisma, basically. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that, that fits Bryce, well. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, the um, scavenger doesn't start how it doesn't have many good options for sway no they're not a particularly charismatic type but you do get a uh, bonus to one stat I from could... your family which yeah well hmm. uh which is uh it's listed under inheritance on your family playbook oh i don't think we did that last time well it's something you do on a per character basis oh okay force or steel Okay. okay yeah. mm -hmm. Sway or law. Sway or steel. 
<laughs> I yeah, I kind of I I was go- I was gonna say, oh well, he needs to have good sway because he's like a merchant. But then again, he could just be like the fixer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's not an, he's not a diplomat. He's just like a um operative, I guess. Yeah. Don't know. Minor type. I'm saying. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Minor typo. Yeah. Um, in the Hunter Google Doc. Right. Let me just. The up. third set of stats says plus exclamation mark for f- yeah mine does too. <laughs> whoops plus one <laughs> well that, are, are you sure are you sure you don't want an exclamation mark in a stat i mean that means um oh i did maths once yeah rational right exclamation mark is factorial yeah it's factorial <laughs> so that's that's a high yeah well not not if it's one because if it's one, it's yes. one times nothing. Yeah. One, it's just one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it's ten, then it's ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Yeah. And if it was plus i as a stat, that would be stranger. Ooh. <laughs> yes. If the square root of minus two, that's my stat. All right. Oh, my character is so feeble. <laughs> got four zero. Okay. Steel minus one. Oh dear. I have law too. Yeah. Let's hide behind other people and tell them all the useful things. I have force two, so hopefully I can take care of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I really don't know what to go for on mine. I've got to say. Okay, what's the uh, big decision point? Your big uh, so point of contention. So, so either I could go, I could go, kind of more optimal because scavengers always have plus one in law and steel. Hmm. So the choice is between having zero in force, minus one in sway, or minus one in force, zero in sway. Okay. In fact, two of these I've just realised are the same. Oh, are they? Like there, there are three options, and two of them are the same. Oh god damn it! Um, because uh, two of them are four zero law one steel yeah. one sorry, minus one. I know, I know we had a few of those, but I thought I'd hit them all. Okay, I will uh, try and see. Okay, that's why we're play testing it. Exactly. Exactly. Indeed. Um. Is the law and steel a good? Uh, probably. Um, so probably the last one would be uh, everything at naught apart from steel at plus one. I think. Okay. Oh, actually, no, that's boring. Um, uh, let's say the last one is steel at plus two, law at plus one, and everything else at minus one. Okay. Steel at plus two, law at plus one, and everything else minus one. Yeah. And steel is like, w- uh, elaborate on what steel is. Uh, steel is what you roll to navigate through the wasteland. It's what you roll to try and react quickly or injure adversity. Um... It's, is there any other thing for it? Okay. It's like canniness. Yeah, basically. It's sort of like your survivability. Hmm. Okay. So basically either yes. I could either I could min max and have um and have law plus two and force minus one sway there or I could try and get a bit of sway and have Force minus one and then plus one for the rest. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it kind of depends on what sort of character I'm going for. Uh, That's true. So my character has uh, force one, lore minus one, steel one, sway one. Okay. All in total. Nice. 
Mm. I, I went with, uh, I ended up with Force 2, Law 0, Steel 1, Sway minus 1. Cool, cool. A very direct character. Yeah. Take yeah. a thing, be good at Force 0. I might just go for whatever the party's lacking, I guess. <laughs> I mean... So I've got Force Nought, Law 2, Steel minus 1, Sway plus 1. Nice. So we're so going it to sounds be... like Steel is the missing link. So there's not necessarily going yeah. to be much of a party. Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, I mean, it, the sort of camera yeah. moves around the uh, world quite a bit. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, just for the sake of interest. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, sure. It's good to be good but at something. Balance no is else's. usually, yeah, yeah. So balance is usually not like a big factor in this kind of games. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as a plus one or minus one modifier is, you know, mm. not massive. Sure, I mean, yeah. It, it okay. has an effect, but it's not a massive effect. Mm -hmm. Have you all remembered to add a point from your family? Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, and then there's looks. Obviously, these lists aren't exhaustive. You can add something else to them if you have a cool idea in mind. Sorry, in the end, I went for force minus one, law plus one, steel one, sway one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for looks, I went I went for feminine, barn, uh, well, feminine barn face, passionate eyes, and graceful body. Okay. Cool. I've got feminine looks, striking face, welcoming eyes, and angular body. Uh. Okay, I'm going to go with ambiguous, mm -hmm. um, pretty, uh, pretty face, uh, praising eyes, and athletic body. Hmm. And I've got um, masculine, weathered face, sun-bleached eyes, and hard body. Nice. Cool. All right. So, um, probably have enough to go around the table and introduce the characters. So, say, mm -hmm. sort of. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We need a name first, I, I suppose. We thought about names yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hardest part. Yeah. There's a bit of time to think about that. I think. Ah, uh, name. I may have to just put a list of names on each playbook. I think that's the... Uh, I've been trying to avoid it because I am not good at thinking up names. <laughs> it, uh... I have a name. Uh, yeah, I usually just pick a theme for my names in a particular game and just like choose from them. For for this game, I've chosen like uh, Judeo-Christian religious bullshit. Okay. So yeah. everything is like names of angels and bullshit like that. Yeah, sounds good. I've gone with ancient Greek lawgivers. Okay. Sorry, are people. Uh, sorry, what? Sorry, I was reading something. Uh, okay. Um... We're just working on names. That's all. I'm gonna go get something to eat quickly. No worries. Uh... Okay. Um... Sorry, what, what are you wanting out of me at this point? Oh, I mean... A name. A name? Okay. Um... Draco Kafka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I 
So yeah, uh, I, for my name, I, well, uh, should I should I wait for the introductions? Hmm? What? Hey, I, I mean, um, all right. Why don't you start with the introductions then? S sort of describe your character in general, their sort of outlook, appearance, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So my name is Adriel. Um, as I said before, I have. Uh, where is it? The word said. Um, I look female. I have a uh, um, a barn face with uh, full of uh, scars and um, and one particular on the side of the head of the on my face that looks like a born that I was born with something. Um, I have um, a dark skin, kind of. Uh, Middle Eastern kind of th kind of thing. Um, passionate eyes. I have brown brown uh, eyes full of passion. That, uh, that are always uh, uh, looking at you, and you can always tell that she's uh, always going after something and after some cause. And he, my body is kind of graceful in a in not in like a delicate way, more like a, the way I move, it seems like I move with ease, okay. always, I always, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know, something else? Uh, should I go to the backstory questions or? Um, so this is just to give an idea of sort of who our characters are before you talk about backstory. Um, yeah. I mean, what's um, their sort of personality like? Um, she looks... Uh, she looks kind of intense at first, so you you think she she'll she'll be hard to to talk with to talk with. But actually, once you actually start talking with her, she's she's pretty easy going. She's kind of uh, uh, happy to talk with you to tell you about the things she believes in, the things uh, uh, she's interested in. Maybe a little too much. Sometimes she gets too uh, too uh, excited about it. But uh, yeah, she's easy to talk with. Her, although you always can tell that he, she's keeping something uh, from you. Okay, cool, cool. And um, other than that, as for clothes, I kind of wear like uh, you know uh, robes of red, uh, like a dark red, brown uh, kind of colors. Uh, that is that are, like suit 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 for the for the desert and that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, who wants to go next? I'm just finalizing my name. Uh, okay. I can if you want then, in which case. Uh, go for it. So I'm playing Toshi Zell. Uh, she's got olive skin, uh, dyed pink hair, grey eyes, and has quite a striking face. So she's not what you would call traditionally beautiful but is kind of noteworthy okay. uh, in that kind of slightly odd way. Uh, and it's quite angular body, so she's quite kind of blanky. Cool. Um, she's wearing fairly practical looking gear that looks like it's got a lot of pockets. Uh, there's a requisite pair of goggles perched on her head, because that's just what you do when you're a tech tribe. Um, <laughs> but it also looks like there's probably stuff built into her clothing that has a slightly technological edge on the basis that I was thinking of going for um, a hardened outfit. Nice. Uh, which would defend against kind of hacking. Is she's certainly eager to please. Uh, she's a, you know, a diplomat like that, uh, mm. but isn't a pushover. Um, and she's very, very anti the supervillain. No, okay, okay. Which is probably why she's been set up session. Do we have a name for the supervillain? Mm. No. At least fact. Although I'm, uh, them. although I'm, my naming conventions, I've gone for things taken from old technology. So, for example, Toshi Dell is like a Toshiba Dell computer. <laughs> um, so something like pick some tech names and shove them together, I guess. Amiga or they can name themselves as Doctor Abominable or something. Sorry, fun. Amiga Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I think it should be done in house, I think. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, BBC um... Spectrum <laughs> 64. Uh, by the way, uh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. At least I'm able to. Hmm? Ellie, go. Oh, did... uh, Commodore Brooker. Commodore Brooker. Suggestion. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if you if you are able to, but I I have I can I have set up the this thing that should, I I don't know if you are seeing it. It's, oh yeah, the lower third thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know no, if no. you have access to that. You should be able to have it. You so it there. there's a link to Hangout Toolbox in the top left. If you click on that, uh, you should be able to set up your lower third. And basically just sort of have your character name and such there. Oh, that's nifty. Yeah. If I get it to work. There we go. I'm slowly going to... Okay, so... Um... Uh... Right, yeah. So, so my character is um, the, they, their title is acquirer, <laughs> but they on, the only name that they have is Morgan. So they're just acquirer Morgan. Um, they are um, they are very like androgynous looking, um, and they don't specifically so they're they're basically they're gender neutral so they only refer to themselves as they and you know it's not obvious exactly what gender they sex they might have been born as um kind of sharp features um a good looking but kind of a bit cruel um uh kind of poise uh good poise um, Personality-wise, um, a bit aloof and patronising, but kind of um, willing to willing to talk, but not necessarily emotionally engage. Okay, interesting. Um, so, probably the kind of person where you kind of have at the back of your mind: Are they just trying to get something out of me okay. at this point? Um, very mercenary yeah yeah um like i you know probably would think oh i can probably benefit from this person but we're never ever going to be friends ever um Fair enough. i think that that's about it that's cool and ed um my character's called draco kafka um i've forgotten what i wrote already yeah, he's a sort of middle-aged, fairly dark-skinned guy. Um, could just be naturally dark-skinned, could have just lived outside for 20 years. Um, his face is very, like, weathered, um, you know, beaten by the wind and the rain. Um, he's pretty muscular um, in a sort of wiry kind of way. Um He's got um, lots and lots of tattoos. Um, he's got like a big one on his head. Uh, you can't see me gesturing. Um, nope. That's like, <laughs> like just a single big arrow pointing <laughs> forwards to the front of his forehead, representing like a single like uniform of law. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Huh. I, I, I don't watch anime. Uh. It's not, yeah, we're going to get into that. <laughs> Don't fall for his trap. Um, and then on the rest of his body, um, he's got lots and lots of sort of religious icon, you know, like a Russian gangster. Mm. Lots of sort of gothic, religious looking stuff, but all the scriptures in that weird, fuzzy death metal stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. And he's got one really big one, one really big back piece. But it's just a bunch of illegible, vaguely arcane-looking scribbles to you guys, but which he insists just says "be just." <laughs> nice, yeah. kind of uh, John Wick vibe, that kind of stuff. 
Okay. Yes. Cool, cool. Nice. Um, he right. wear... Oops, sorry, oh. carry on, carry on. And then, like, outfit-wise, um, the whole sort of look they have going is sort of, like, industrial meets monastic kind of thing. Hmm. So he's wearing, like, a pre... Um, like a pre-fall um, riot vest hmm. um, with like a big flowing coat that's a bit like maybe like a monk's robe or a cowboy duster. Hmm. Um, and then some kind of like rugged army trousers, I guess. Okay. Um, a big, tall um, boots, but it's all covered in like little scrolls and purity seals and things like that. Okay. Again, in that same weird script. And um, he's also got like a gas mask for maximum post apocness for operating in harsh environments. Mm. And his riding lizard has one too, and it's adorable. Nice. All right. Um, sorry, I was just going to say, in terms of clothes, mm. um, Morgan's wearing kind of uh, sort of slick but utilitarian sort of work like kind of a i guess like a gray jumpsuit with like a sort of a jacket kind of stylish jacket over the top of it and a shoulder kind of bag that's like the tools and stuff nice anyway that's cool right so uh do might as well do backstory questions then so your playbook will have a few three different backstory things um, we'll take it in turns to put at least one person's name in one of the slots. Um, you can answer one, you can answer three, up to you. I mean, you can also answer two, that's also an option. And um, <laughs> these just mean like that you have a bit of a deeper understanding of that person, which means that if it comes time to uh, that you need to help them, that you need to. Uh, do something to help to help them out. Uh, you'll be a bit better at it. Also, you know, builds up this relationship between you. So, who wants to start? I'll go first. Cool. Are we going to do all three of our background questions, or do one and keep going round in a circle? Um, three is probably faster. Yeah, I mean, so you yeah. can do all three. You can only do two if you can't think of a good one. Whatever. Okay. So my first one is X has fought shoulder to shoulder with me, um, and I think I'm going to go with Toshi for that one. If we're both hunting the same outlaw, Sounds then we've good. probably gotten into a couple of scrapes on the way, and I've seen that she has more metal than she lets on. Hmm. And she's not dead yet. I know, I'm a bit so. weak. But I'm not dead yet. Um, my next one is X once left me for dead. Sounds good. Um, I think I'm going to go with Adriel for that one. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Or should I answer that? Um, I don't know. Maybe, um, yeah, you come up with something. I haven't got anything. So mm -hmm. in what kind of dangerous situations would you think uh, you'll find yourself in? Well, I mainly like roam the wastelands between the civilized settlements searching for runaway outlaws so quite safe mm. then normally yeah yeah uh i think it was uh or or west cross uh that that time when we were both uh were confronted by the prophet prophet the followers of the prophet of laws of doom uh, I almost died, and I thought you died for for real. And I I, I think it was a really close encounter. And uh, uh, obviously, you have to choose between uh, you. I, I thought you were that you had no opportunity to 
to survive. So I thought I, I, I could be more useful helping other people. But, mm. uh, so yeah, I decided that I, I had to let you for that. Fair enough. I understand, but I'm still mad. Yeah, I understand that too. <laughs> And then my last one is X is smart enough to what to be worth keeping around. And I think I will go with acquire a Morgan for that one. Okay. They seem to know what they're doing, even if they do get on my nerves. Uh sorry, what was that? Uh, I've just decided that you are smart enough to be worth keeping around. <laughs> it's a compliment, sort of. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, who's up next? I can if you want. Go for it. Mm -hmm. So I've got X showed me their family secrets in confidence. And I think I'll go for Adriel for that. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that too. Um, yeah, that, that makes totally sense. Total sense. Given that our families have that kind of relationship thing going on. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I think so. The next one is X will make a good bodyguard, and I think that has to go to Draco. Okay. My side, um, Carlton, and I really aren't. I'm not. So, uh, yeah, excellent bodyguard material. Um, and it goes, I suspect X is stealing my secrets for their family. So I might have to put Morgan in that one, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Val slander. Cool. But I only suspect. I have no proof. There's a big difference between stealing and, uh, you know... Business acquiring through business ventures. Right. Very true. It's a hostile acquisition. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> it's not a stealing. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to go next, Lawrence? Uh, sure. Um, so I've got X has much to learn about life in the wasteland. So I don't know which one of you would be like new to the wasteland, I guess either Toshi or Adriel. Hmm. Um I go uh out of here, okay. Well, I, mean, okay. I think I could work make more too, so remember also that uh presumably Stephen will bring another character in next session, so you might want to yeah. have things. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to sort of leave questions open for uh, future mm -hmm. characters to come in. But uh, what was the other family? Uh, the cultivators of the new flesh. Mm. All right. Well, I'll leave. Um, I'll leave one free then. Um, okay. My other one is X is why I come back to civilization. Mm. I can't think of an answer to that one. <laughs> uh, I don't think... Don't think Morgan's the type to be sentimental. No, I don't really think any of them would work, honestly. <laughs> like, uh. comes back to civil... I, I can see the... Hmm? I could almost see cultivators of the new flesh being something that would bring you back to civilization because they're the ones hmm. who are making lots yeah. of things you might want. Yeah, no, that's fair. All right, well, let's leave that one blank then. Uh, and then the third is X shares my lust for discovery. Uh, now, discovery is definitely a good way of putting it. <laughs> but it does make it sound more sentimental than it is. I think in this context, it's discovery of things that will make me rich. Colon colonialism. Yeah. 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 I, I'm sure that or there's the potential for two people both having their own interpretations of discovery yet, sure, but not realising sure. the other does. And love. <laughs> I want to know what that is. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, so who who here would say they have a lust for discovery? 
Mm. I would say very much so. Okay. Uh, problem is, I've see, I'm 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 really double, just completely quadrupling down on the enclave. If uh, I have you as for two of my personal answers well, no, and no, like just, four. Just, just pick one of them. I wasn't sure which you picked. I wasn't sure what you picked for the first one. Would you've gone? With, yeah, I could um, change that Percy one. Or Adriel. Maybe. Um, hmm? Maybe the like wasteland scout wanderer community is quite small yes and all of us like ranger types kind of know each other professionally i mean that's the assumption sure. is that yeah. you're all sort of wasteland notables enough that you've had previous run-ins with everyone else okay i'm i'm gonna say actually i so i could say that adriel has a lot to learn about life in the wasteland because she's um like has believes in things other than wealth and power. Yeah, I mean that. that <laughs> I, I, I can see that, Wodkin. Yeah. Um, okay, and I'll say Toshi shares my lust for discovery, even if the reason why we want to discover the things are very different. <laughs> um, and I'll leave the X is why I come back to civilization blank. In, in your now. case, he's discovering the same way as when the Spanish people go to America and, this, and they say, oh, we have discovered America. And the yeah. young people say, uh, what? <laughs> yes, exactly. Discovered in in a way that is relevant to my interest. <laughs> in the same way that uh, an agent discovers a talent. Hmm. <laughs> or, you know, and then exploits a them. weapon. Right. So, uh, Adriel, what's your relationships? Um, I respect uh, Draco's uh, concerns, concern for others. Mm, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think he. I think I see him like uh, someone who has different uh, beliefs that I do, but who is also like. Who also has beliefs, as opposed to other people, um, and I do th think he is uh, actually concerned for concerned for for people, for helping people, like that, that kind of stuff, which I am I am also, but in a different way. Cool. Um, this one works pretty easy. Uh, Acquirer has grown fat on the backs of the of others' labor. <laughs> Seems legit. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, I I'm not sure. I could. Uh, I think I'm going to let it for the for the other family. Okay. Was that because second one uh, for me? Yes. 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 Very much. Has, I heard the end of it. And I said, "Oh, that's for me." And yeah, sure um, enough. Acquire has grown fat on the backs of the of others labor. <laughs> I'll have you know that Morgan is incredibly fit. <laughs> Spiritually fat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you have something like a soul. They work very hard. <laughs> Just to clarify, these these backstory questions, they're not giving us history or bond or anything. No, they're no, no. Filling in a blank. Okay. Yes. They're just sort of giving some context to who you are and yeah. what relationships you might have had. Okay, um, so with those questions, then you just need to pick a couple of uh, character moves to start with. Ooh. Oh, also, I've got a thing in my backstory that says I add one to my outfit investment when picking starting gear. Oh, I assume that doesn't add that... one to outfit investment full stop. It yeah, sorry, that, that should be... Purposes of... That should actually be under a separate gear heading. Uh, sorry, I've oh, missed okay. up the formatting a bit. Basically, like all of you, every time that you gear up your character, get a free point in one category uh, from your character playbook, just from the sort of personal gear that you bring to the table. For the is that is that sorry, just to clarify, is that adding one in a kind of you add one to your family stats, or is it for the purposes of gear? It's for the purposes of gear. Cool. Like you have a sort of phantom plus one that only counts yeah, when yeah. they're equipping you. Yeah, I get it. Soft buff. Yeah. 
okay, sorry. Um, go on. Oh, um, I was just going to say that it. the only choice left now is a couple of family moves. No, character moves. So if you read through the moves on your character playbook, you should be able to pick a couple of them that you want to take with you. Okay, I already chose them. All right. Yeah. I took the Anarchist Cookbook and the Secret Army. And I know what you're going to say. I'm not, make, I know, I'm not a terrorist leader at all. Uh, I don't even like you say, you will imply that. I'm not going to make terrorist things. For God. <laughs> Okay. You just happen to have the ability to turn a lot of people into uh, followers willing to yeah. die for you and uh, access to making bombs. Just because I have the tools doesn't mean I'm going to use them. Oh, that's a good point. It's a very good point. And I'm sure that you never will. Possession of Unless God that. tells me to. In which case, of course, I have no other option. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm... I'm thinking. I uh, I'm thinking of going for tech attunement, which is you can always detect the advanced tech of the world before when it's within a few hundred meters. The GM will tell you how much there is and roughly where to look. And Ooh, nice. architectural eye, when you take some time to plan out the exploration of a new ruin, blah blah blah. Stuff happens. Yep. Uh, you can hide in it. And, you can see who's in there. Yeah. You can use it as a weapon against others. That sort of thing. Yep. 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 Uh, I think they make the most sense. Cool. So, yep. So I'm definitely going to take red in tooth and claw. Mm-hmm. Just Good one. and arring about. Others. Hunter's mm. law doesn't make much sense if I'm mainly hunting criminals. Mm. It's mostly a sort of learn about the monster by examining its droppings sort of thing. Yeah. If you wanted to be a witcher or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, the the Witcher is sort of, sorry, the Witcher. The Hunter is sort of equal parts of Witcher and an Assassin's Creed protagonist sort of thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, really depending on the moves you take, you really inform the kind of character you are you are you, are, you, are, you have. Mm. Yeah. I think I'll take um, a shadow in the wind as well. Solid choice. Stealthy. She was just a shadow in the wind. Oh, wait, that's a different song. <laughs> is my. Does that mean that my riding lizard is also super stealthy? Hmm. 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 It's genetically modified for. Camouflage. Yeah, my job. I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, Chameleon. probably you want one of its specialties to be hiding in that play case, but uh, mm -hmm. it's so long as you concentrate on stealth is the trigger, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, in which case, if you're able to concentrate on stealth while riding a lizard, then more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining a giant lizard, like, tiptoeing, <laughs> tiptoeing in the corner. Clever girl. I suppose I could always get off. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. What are you thinking, Ellie? I think, I think I'm inclined to go for Fragile Alliance. So when you try and bring many groups together to accomplish a goal, well, sway. And sometimes they'll stick together long enough to get the job done. Sometimes they'll stick around afterwards as well. Uh, and I'll go for long memories. 
when you enter a new court, roll law, and on a 7 to 9, name one secret of the leaders. And on a 10 plus, you've helped one of those parties in a major way. Good, sir. So you've been a diplomat for a while? Yes. Right. Okay, so I think we've got characters and moves and everything. My God. Uh, we need to do gear. Yes. <laughs> we need to do gear. <laughs> uh, technically, you only pick gear when the when play sort of zooms in on you to see. Okay. But I mean, it might have a good be a good idea to have an idea of what you would have. Um, I'm just thinking. Uh, yeah. Um, no, no. Huh? If you have a question, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to get another glass of water. Uh, if you guys might as well have a look through gear and just pick what you might want to have. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Sure. Which book is that in? Uh, right. I'll be the best place to look for that. Um, I, I'm really sorry, sorry. I I might have to um, shoot off. Okay. Well, this is quite I a natural can, point if, to end it for today, I guess, if we have characters. Sure? Is there anything settled. you need me to do before I go? Um, no, let's just, say that, anything. let's just say that sort of between now and next session, sort of pick out gear stuff and sort of read chapters cool. and such, you know. Cool. Yeah, I'll message. I'll message you about it and stuff. That's cool. Um, if I mean, any questions? Yeah, I mean that goes for everyone, right? Yeah. Sorry, we didn't get to oh, do any yeah, sort of I'm actual uh, role Sorry playing Sorry about today, that, guys. But, uh, it is melting, and sorry, it's think too much as well. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. <laughs>